Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about local anesthetic dosing and calculations for youth in regional anesthesia. So our first case is a 40-year-old male who's 70 kilos who was involved in a motor vehicle accident and undergoes urgent exploratory laparotomy with a large vertical incision. We plan to perform regional anesthesia for this man. Which blocks can you do and how much local anesthetic can be given for these nerve blocks? So for a large midline vertical incision, you can do bilateral subcostal tap blocks as well as bilateral tap blocks in the um, standard location. So the subcostal tap blocks would cover dermatomes T6 through T9, whereas the lateral tap blocks would cover the T10 uh, through T12 to L1 dermatomes. For this block, we recommend doing uh, using bupivacaine. Since these blocks are for analgesia, and uh, it would be good for the local to last six up to you know six up to twenty four hours. So remember, the max dose of bupivacaine is two and a half milligrams per kilogram. So this patient is seventy kilos. So seventy kilos times the max dose of two and a half milligrams per kilogram equals a maximum dose of 175 milligrams. To calculate how much volume of local you can give, say you're giving 0.25% bupivacaine. That equates to 2.5 milligrams per mil. So you can give up to 70 milliliters of 0.25% bupivacaine. And you get that by dividing the max dose, 175 milligrams by the concentration of the 0.25% bupivacaine, and that gives you the 70 milliliters total volume you can give for this patient. So since you're doing four injections, two subcostals and two lateral taps, you can give 15 milliliters of the 0.25% bupivacaine for each injection, which gives you a total volume of 60 milliliters. This is safely under the maximum dose of 70 milliliters. Our next case is a 25 year old female who's 60 kilograms. She has an urgent C-section under general anesthesia and has a lot of pain postoperatively. Which block can you do and how much local anesthetic can be given? So for this patient, since she has a a lower abdominal incision, a fan and seal incision, you can do bilateral tap blocks that cover the T10 through T12 to L1 dermatomes. Again, I would recommend using bupivacaine for longer lasting pain control. And again, the max dose of bupivacaine is two and a half milligrams per kilogram. So her toxic dose would be two and a half times her weight, 60 kilograms, which equals 150 milligrams. To get that volume, or to determine the, what volume of local anesthetic you give, you can take the total uh, toxic dose, which is 150 milligrams, and divide it by the concentration of the 0.25% bupivacaine. So that's 150 divided by two and a half, and that gives you a total of 60 milliliters of local anesthetic that can be given to her. So if you're doing bilateral tap blocks, so two injections total, you can inject 25 milliliters on each side for a total of 50 milliliters. 25 on each side should be sufficient to have a nice spread of local anesthetic in her tap planes. And you're also under the toxic dose. Our next case is a 16 year old male, let's say he's 55 kilograms. He falls off a motorbike and fractures his wrist. You plan to do his case under regional anesthesia. Which block can you do and what dose of local anesthetic can be given? So a wrist block would, could be done under a supraclavicular nerve block. So here again is 
um, on the right, a picture that shows what the supraclavicular nerve block covers. You can see it covers everything beyond the shoulder. It may miss the medial aspect of the upper arm. So you may need to supplement with an intercostal brachial block, especially if the surgeons are using a tourniquet. Here's also a picture of what the nerve block looks under ultrasound. So again, you look for the subclavian artery, you find the brachial plexus, which has the yellow arrow is pointing to it. And then of course you always want to locate the first rib and um, have the, your targets situated um, superior to the rib. And you also want to look for pleura. So again, you can do this block with bupivacaine. It would provide a nice surgical block, a motor block, and it would also provide pain control after surgery. So again, the max dose is two and a half milligrams per kilogram. So his toxic dose would be 55 kilos times two and a half, which gives 137.5 milligrams. For a surgical block, you would need half percent bupivacaine, and the concentration would be five milligrams per milliliter. So to find the maximum volume of local anesthetic, the maximum volume of the plain bupivacaine, you would take the toxic dose, which is 137.5 milligrams, and divide that by the concentration, which is five. And so the maximum volume you can give to this patient safely is 27.5 milliliters. So for this young man, you can inject 20 to 25 milliliters of half percent pivacaine safely. And that's typically the amount that should uh, give you a nice uh, supraclavicular nerve block. Let's look at our last case. So we'll take the same case as the um, previous slide. So we have a 16 year old male who's 55 kilograms. He falls off his motorbike and fractures his wrist. This time, however, you want to do the supraclavicular block with lidocaine. So remember, lidocaine has a much quicker onset than bupivacaine, but also has a shorter duration of action. It lasts maybe two to three hours versus bupivacaine, which can last you know, six and then up to 24 hours. So when would you want to do a block with lidocaine? Say this patient's fracture is really minimal and the surgeon says the case will be very quickly, will be done very quickly. Uh, that can be a good indication for a shorter acting anesthetic. And then say you talk to the patient about a nerve block and he doesn't want his arm to be numb for 12 hours, uh, then lidocaine would also be a good choice. So how much lidocaine can be given for this supraclavicular block? Remember the max dose of lidocaine is four and a half milligrams per kilogram. So four and a half times 55 is two 47.5 milligrams. 2% lidocaine, the, the concentration comes out to be 20 milligrams per milliliter. So to find the maximum volume this patient can get, you take the toxic dose, which is 247.5 milligrams, divided by the concentration, 20, and that gives you 12.3 milliliters. That's not very much volume. Remember for the, uh, a successful supraclavicular block, you probably need volumes closer to 20 milliliters. So here's where epinephrine comes uh, into use. If you add epinephrine to the lidocaine, the patient can receive uh, seven milligrams per, per kilogram of lidocaine with epi. So then the max dose becomes seven times the weight, 385 milligrams. And then to calculate the volume, you divide that by the concentration and you get 19.25 milliliters, which is uh, should be sufficient to give a adequately uh, working supraclavicular block. You can also dilute your 2% lidocaine to 1.5%, and that way you can also get more volume.